Hello friends, this is uh, lesson 14 part 1 and here we are going to talk about advanced statistics and these are the topics. First we have to know what is pint estimate, then we will consider some basic terminologies and we will talk about uh, hypothesis testing and we will provide some examples for them. Now let's start the topic. So first we have to know what is pint estimate. Pint estimate is an estimate of a population parameter based on sample data. Friends, what does it mean? See, whenever we are doing any estimation, so directly we are not conducting that on population parameter because we said population is the set of all observations. So considering all observations, it is so difficult to like uh, apply any uh, estimate there or any calculation, for example, means or variance, standard deviation on whole population. It is difficult because it is consuming time and also it is taking lots of space. Instead of that, we are taking a sample of the population. We will take a sample from this population and we will apply the calculation on the sample and based on that we will estimate the population parameter. So that is called pint estimate. We use pint estimate to estimate population means, variance, standard deviation etc. based on sample. We first draw a sample from population. We conduct a test on this and that based on this, the result of this, we will estimate the population parameter. So that is called pint estimate. And the, and the reason also I mentioned, because we are not taking the whole population, it is difficult consuming time and space, all those problems. So instead of that, we take a sample and we conduct a test on that or a calculation on that. And based on that, we will estimate population parameters then. So let's see the terminologies which we will be using more here. You should be familiar with them. The first thing here is, okay, confidence interval. So what is confidence interval? The name itself indicates that confidence interval is a range of values. It means we have the upper bound and we have the lower bound. In between these two numbers, for example, A, and B, there are so many other values in between. So here, this interval is called confidence interval. So based on values on a pint estimate that contains the true population parameter, this point is important, friends. Whenever we are creating a confidence interval, so confidence interval should be uh, in a position that this population parameter lies in between these two values. Then we say, yeah, this is a confidence interval. A population parameter does not lie between these two numbers, so that cannot be a confidence interval. Or some confidence level. So now let's say, here we have an example for them. If you want to have a 95% chance of capturing the true population parameter, it means we are sure that this population parameter lies between A and B using only a single point estimate, you have to set your confidence level to 95%. It means 95% we are sure that this population parameter lies between A and B. So A and B is then called confidence and two. I hope you understood this. Now, let's see what is uh, confidence level. So confidence level here, it means how much we are sure that this parameter, population parameter, lies between this confidence and two. So that is called confidence level. That is the level of how much we are sure about the parameter that lies between the confidence interval. So here the probability that if the test is conducted repeatedly, the result 
the result obtained would be same anytime we are conducting the like uh, any test so the probability shows the result will fall within this confidence interval so this confidence level is equal to 1 minus alpha so what is this alpha alpha is called significance level for example here 1 means 100% from 100% if our confidence uh, level is 95% so here we put 95% so we will get some other value which is called for example here if I put 95 the result will be okay 0 0.05 so it means this much we are not sure but 95% we are sure that the value will fall within this range 95% is called confidence level this uh, 0, 0.0 which we are not sure about so that is called significance level and confidence interval is equal to 1 minus this value alpha which is called significance level okay friends now the second here the third one significance level here in a hypothesis is the significance level or alpha is the probability making the wrong decision when the null hypothesis is true so here I said some wrong decision also will be there. For example, we cannot say 100% the value will fall within this range. If we say it is a wrong claim because 100% everything is not possible, maybe something like 0, 0.0, there we have a wrong decision. So that wrong decision with this value is called significance level. So see here I said 100% accuracy is not possible for accepting or rejecting the hypothesis. Generally, it is 0.05 or 5% means 95% of confident and we have 5% of significance label. This much we are sure the value falls within the interval and this much we say there may be some errors, some some like we say like uh, deviation the data may be deviated or spread out from the mean 5% we are not sure but 95% we are sure so this 5% is called significance level 95% is called okay confident level and this is the formula for that 100 minus 95 it is giving me this one okay friends then we will talk about this hypothesis testing this I will leave for the next lecture now let's have some examples for these things what we discussed okay first I am putting some important libraries here uh, and now then we talked about pint estimate and we said pint estimate is an estimate of population parameter based on sample data it means you are taking a sample from the population you are conducting tests on this sample and based on the sample data we are estimating what population parameter let's have an example here friends suppose there are 9000 employees and we want or we are interested to determine the average length of their breaks taken by each employee every day so 9,000 employees we have and for that if I go asking each and every person so it is very difficult 9,000 employees are there it is difficult so what we are doing we will take a sample a sample from this 9,000 and based on that sample we will estimate okay the break time of 9,000 people here we are doing it so 9,000 from 9,000 first I think th take 3,000 people and we think that they, their breaking time is like 60 minutes. We assume that 3,000 people and break time is the mu or the mean is 60 minutes. So here is 
a function we can call and this function is called okay Python uh, it is a discrete probability distribution that expresses the probability of a given number occurring within this fixed interval so this is the mean and this is sample size and this log is equal to 10 means the leftmost value we are starting from so we are consuming we are assuming that the mean is 60 minutes break for 300 sorry 3000 people now let me execute this and the result is stored in long breaks variable now i'm going to visualize this here see the result is split here we say 60 minute is break time but here it is uh, estimated no it is 70 minutes because this is the mean here this is the mean and this is conducted for how many people randomly 800 people are selected from 3000 randomly how much 800 and the mean is not 60 minutes but it is 70 minutes now again what we are doing this time this I change the sample size to 6,000 6, people because 3,000 we have already taken 6,000 I am taking 6,000 plus 3,000 it is giving me the whole population which is 9,000 so here I say no this time I think that the break time is 15 minutes not 60 minutes but 50 minutes and this result is stored in this variable short breaks okay now let me execute this also here then you will see see again here 15 falls on the left of the mean which is randomly selected is here like maybe okay it is 20 here we say no it is 23 maybe it is 23 something like that here this is the mean but our mean which we said 15 that falls on the left so how many people are selected randomly here around okay 1750 people or implies or selected from these much values randomly now what we are doing to get the whole population because the population is 9000 to get the whole population what we are doing we are combining these two samples long breaks and short breaks means 3000 people employees and here we have 6000 employees so the total if we can cut in it it is providing us 9000 people or employees and the result will be stored and breaks yeah it is stored now if i execute this part what we are getting we are getting two hums the first hum and the second hum this is for short and this is for long uh, long breaks and this is for short breaks and randomly 4000 people are randomly selected and now let's see find the mean for them for 9000 people the mean the average we are going to find directly we didn't find because first we divided into two samples short and long uh, breaks and then after that we combine them and now we are going to find the average time so the average it is giving us for 40 minutes it is not 60 minutes it is not 15 15 minutes but the average time taken uh, or the break taken by the employees is how much 40 minutes so based on samples now we are estimating our population time so we took two samples 3000 and 6000 and based on that then we estimated the whole population that is called pint estimate a pint estimate is an estimate of population parameter based on sample data and now t see here if we randomly select how many people okay 100 random people if we select and see the length of their breaks how it is possible it's very simple size change to 100 and here is the population breaks 
because break is the concatenation of 6,000 plus 3,000, 9,000. So among 9,000, we are randomly selecting 100 people and we see the result is stored in this sample breaks. Yeah, and now I'm going to execute this part and see the difference. Okay, see the variation, the variation is, okay, around, if you take the absolute value of this, it is around, uh, okay, let me put it here. Absolute of that means we are not considering the sign. So it is around 1.23 or 1.28 minutes, which is not bad. This much deviation is there. So it means we have estimated the value correctly. There is not so much. Now, if we take randomly any number from that population and then we find the, uh, the average for that and then we subtract it from the whole mean so it is giving us the deviation or the spread out how much the data was spread out really from the total mean so it means this much the data is deviated and if you remember for something we had uh, for calculating the deviation we had maximum minus minimum and that was called range now here the maximum is the total for 9000 people that break this value and this sample mean we are subtracting from that so it is giving us this much difference so it is a very low or small value deviation so we accept it yeah it is not bad so our estimation is correct. Now let's say we talked about some term, uh, terminologies here. We said first we talked about this one confidence interval. So we said confident, confidence interval is a range of values we are fairly sure true value lies in. For example here in this figure here we have lower bound and here we have upper bound. So from this point to this point this is called confidence interval. And how much we are sure that the value we are estimating from the population will lie between this range, upper and lower within this range. So that is called confidence level. How much we are sure the population parameter that lies between this range, lower limit, upper limit, within this, if it is 95% we are sure, so how much 0.0.5 means we, that much we are not sure and that is called significant level. What is significance level? The probability of making the wrong decision when the null hypothesis is true. Yeah, we say 95% we are sure the population parameter will lie between this upper limit and lower limit which is called the confidence level but 0.0 zero five percent that much we are not sure because we said hundred percent we cannot say here if you remember hundred percent we cannot say that the value will be accepted or rejected five percent deviation is there so this is called this five percent deviation is called significance level and here Confidence intervals are often used with a margin of error. So this margin errors here, what we have, like here we have 0.05. These are called the deviations or standard deviations. Because friends, we are estimating the population parameter based on sample. So sample and population, they are different. Because sample is a subset of population when you are estimating based on sample the whole population some deviations are there so that deviation is nothing but five percent deviation and they are called standard deviation or it is called standard error or it is called margin but here friends if you are considering only one side so it means it is one side testing it means we are not considering this side so the variation will be 0 0.05 means 5% 
if it is double sided so both the sides so that should be divided by 2 so t will be equal to 0 0.025 if you divide this value if you are conducting only one side test for example if you are considering only the values greater than 100 so you will considering this side only or for example if you are considering the values smaller than a fixed value for example the average height of a person for example we say it is okay 75 centimeter so below that value and above that value what do you call that so here we have it means that 75 will be the mean this is called the mean of the population if normally distributed so this is the mean and above that we will have some values and below that we will have some values so those values are called deviations and standard deviations and we will call it some errors or margins values we call them and now let's see how can we make a confidence interval confidence interval so for that i have created a function here make confidence interval and i am taking a sample of 100 people among 9000 so sample size is equal to how much 100 what is the total population 9000 and for this sample i am taking the mean the mean of the sample the sample is stored in this one the mean of that then i go i take the standard deviation for that and then i go to find the standard error the standard error means the standard deviation how much the values are deviated or spread out from the mean because we said we are estimating the uh, whole population based on samples so certainly there are some deviations those are called the errors and this for that standard error the formula is standard deviation divided by the square root of okay sample size means hundred square root of this one and now we have a predefined function for them we are calling this t dot interval and here is this one is confidence level and this is degree of freedom which is equal to okay sample size minus one i will talk about this why we put here minus one and what is this uh, degree of freedom but here you just assume that here we have log is equal to sample mean the left the most left value is starting from sample mean and we have the standard error which is stored in the sigma and this will be returning the interval for us and i am printing it here let me execute and see yeah it is giving us the interval for the whole population here is the interval the value is between okay uh, 35.6 so this is the new value because it is randomly selecting the values or changing every time here so this is the new value and this is the up bound and that is the lower bound the values are randomly selected now here the range of values it means these two values represents the confidence interval for the average time with 95 percent confidence level here we put the value alpha is equal to 0. Point. okay 95 means 95 percent confidence is there now any value from 9000 if you're taking randomly a value that value we are 95 percent sure that will fall within this range let us satisfy this okay i created a variable here it is equal to zero time in interval is equal to zero i take randomly how many times i'm calling this function okay ten thousand time i'm calling my function and ten thousand time it is returning two values upper bound and lower bounds and the value is stored here and now we check whether that value falls within this range or not whether it falls within this range or not if it is falling then we are incrementing that and we'll see how many times it is incremented and that will be displayed here it is taking time because 10,000 time it is running uh, calling the same function 10,000 times so see here friends 0.95 percent it is really this value which is called the confidence 
now any time any value if you if you are calling the function and you are taking a number from those 9000 values that will fall within this range so this 95 sorry 35 0.99 is nothing but the mean here the average this value for instance this value it is 40 you can put 40 or you can put like for example as I put put it here yeah 39.99 it is actually if we round the value it is 40 so the value lies between these two any value if you take from those 9000 see 10,000 time I am calling this function so the value lies between this range and we are sure about that 95% that is correct okay friends I hope you understood about these things we talked about point estimate and then we talked about here these terminologies confidence level significance level then confidence interval I hope you understood all these